Good day everybody, Yannick Chauvin here once again for Yannick's photo blog and today I'm really really excited to present to you Lightroom version 2 and most specifically um, the adjustment brush. Now um, I've just installed Lightroom a couple of days back and I've been playing around with the new features uh, but I keep coming back to this magnificent brush. Um, what does it do? Basically, um, it creates adjustments locally. Uh, as photographers, we asked for uh, dodging and burning in version 2, uh, local dodging and burning, uh, just like in Photoshop, and we got a lot more than that. We got a tool that's not even in Photoshop CS3 yet. It probably won't be till CS4 either. Don't take my word for that, but you never know. Um, let's get right to it. The adjustment brush can be found right here. Now, when it's off, you will not see the menu there. Uh, but when it's on, you'll see a darker menu than the regular menus. And this is your adjustment brush menu. First thing we'll look at is down here. First thing you can do is adjust the size with the slider here or with the mouse wheel, like so. Next thing is the feather. The feather is actually the second circle that you see around the brush. So I can go and decrease the feather to nothing and increase it to a pretty big size. So let me just put it to around 40-ish percent. And there we have a brush with a small feather. Um, those are the two main features. There's flow and density. Um, I always like to keep those at 100 for now. I'm not, I haven't played with those two functions yet, but that's uh, neither here nor there for this tutorial. There's also an auto mask feature. Now what that does is that it will um, allow you to adjust a certain area without affecting another uh, contrasted area. Let's say you have a sky and some clouds and you just want to affect the sky. Uh, it won't go into the clouds because of that contrast. Uh, if you have auto mask off, it'll affect wherever the brush is. So um, let's go right to it and do a little demo. Here's an image that I took at a nonprofit organization. I was uh, photographing uh, a group of volunteers that were there. And this is a candid shot, actually, in between takes. And um, I really like the expression on her face, so I, I wanted to highlight her face. Uh, the background was a little too uh, exposed for my taste. I wanted to numb the background uh, down, uh, underexpose it quite a bit, actually, and then but keep the face practically exposed as it is now. now Traditionally in Photoshop, you'd have to go in there, create a, an adjustment layer, um, and then mask out some things, and very, very long. See how easy it is here in Lightroom. We're going to use click on our adjustment brush, click on the minus sign here in exposure. By default, it brings it to minus one, but that's all right. We can adjust that later. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, and it's really, really important, this is all non-destructive. All right, so your image will not be uh, affected by p pixels and whatnot. So that makes it even better. Now let me go ahead and increase the brush size and just paint in exposure. Okay, I can reduce brush size here. I'm doing this rough here, so but just to give you an idea. As you can see, once I let go, there's this button that appears. Now, if I keep it over there, you'll see the mask that it created. I actually created a layer mask on top of my image. Isn't that great? Now, you can also use the Erase button here and go erase certain areas of that mask um, at will. So if you went in a little too much, you can go and start erasing that mask whenever you want to. We'll just leave it like that for now. It's not important. Um, now, it's at minus one exposure, but I want it even darker than that. What's great about this is since it's a mask, you can always go back and play with it and darken it and lighten it as much as you want. And as you can see, it's not affecting the face. 
So let me bring it right down to minus 4. And that looks really good. Now, of course, I can go clean that up, but uh, um, I really like it like that for now. All right. Now, the face looks pretty well exposed. We're going to keep it like that, but we could always use uh, another um, exposure brush. It can be a, pl uh, a positive exposure, so increasing the exposure. Um, I can be using it for brightness, for contrast, for saturation, for clarity, and for sharpness. Let's try clarity for fun here. If I click on the plus sign, it goes by default to 50. And I can go into the eyes, the lips, the ear. I could do the whole face as well. It created another dot here, and you can see where I've masked clarity in. And then I could go and increase clarity or decrease it. Uh, what's also great in Lightroom, too, is that you can go negative on clarity, which is something you couldn't do in, in version 1. Uh, what that does, it smooths the skin. So it's a bit like a, a neat image or noise ninja type of uh, effect. Uh, so let me just bring it back up a little bit. And there we go. Now, if you ever want to delete a mask that you've created, just make sure it's selected. You'll see that out of the two dots here, one's white, one's dark. The dark one is the selected one. Just press delete on your keyboard, and it'll delete it. And the effect will go away. Now, apart from those six functions that you can do with the adjustment, um, uh, the adjustment brush, you can also add color to your image locally. And that's great, too. Let me just click on color. And you can see the color picker here. Um, this is a nice orange glow. It looks like a CTO gel, which is a tungsten uh, colored gel. So you can by increasing the feather so it's more like a light source, I could go in and pretend that there's a flash here with a CTO gel that adds some warmth. So I can go and paint this in, maybe a little bit on the cheek here. And of course, that's a little too strong by, for the default. But again, I can just go in and reduce its saturation and just give it that little glow here. And we can see before and after. And voila, instant CTO gel right there. I haven't created extra layers or nothing like that. It's just click and brush. It's that simple. You just got to love it. Now, they've added another cool feature. It's the exact same functions, but instead of being a brush, it's what they call a graduated filter, a bit like a neutral density graduated filter or any other type of filters. Now let's see how that graduated filter works. Let me just go choose another image really quickly. Let's go back into our develop module. Let's click on our graduated filter. Again, a same type of menu appears. And all you do then is click and drop. Now, I'm in my color, so I'm adding an orange tint here. Let me just delete that, because I want to show you more of a graduated neutral density filter. So I'll click on negative exposure, because I want to darken the sky up. And again, I click and drag. And there you go. It's that simple. And you can do clarity, saturation, brightness, contrast with this type of filter, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Lightroom 2, and I'm showing this because it could be a great alternative to Photoshop, where Photoshop is roughly around $600. This one is half the price at $300. So you could actually uh, purchase this software and do all your photo retouching and, and uh, storing straight from Lightroom without having to buy the expensive Photoshop version. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.